Hey everyone, it's Dave here from the WebStorm team. Now you've set up your first project, you're probably asking, what's next? I mean, you can just get on with your coding, as everything should now work pretty much out of the box. Well, actually sometimes it can be really fun to personalize your IDE. In this video, we'll look at some awesome options for customizing WebStorm. We'll cover themes, plugins, editor options, and shortcuts. And if you stick around all the way to the end, I'll even show you some super cool hidden settings in the IDE. So, let's have a look. Something that can have a huge impact on the look and feel of the IDE is the theme you use. WebStorm comes with some built-in themes already, like the dark theme, or if you're feeling particularly dangerous, the light theme options. But if you're looking for something a little more bedazzling, there are loads of other themes available. Today, I think the purple IDE will really make my desktop pop. The themes are applied to the whole IDE and can give the editor, toolbars, and menu different looks. And if you decide you don't like it, not to worry. Switching themes is really easy to do. All you need to do is press Control and this backspace thing to open the switch pop-up. From here, you can scroll through the themes you have installed, preview them, and choose a different one. Themes are not the only plugins available. So even though the IDE comes with just about everything you could ever wish for, Sometimes you might think, I really wish I could have a Nyan Cat loading bar. For just such an occasion, there's an extensive library of plugins you can install to extend WebStorm with extra functionality. For instance, my personal favorite is to make the editor Vim-like. So you get Vim while still getting all the IDE features, basically the best of both worlds. And a quick bonus tip, if you do like to use Vim, is you can go to the editor, general, appearance, and make the show line numbers hybrid. Then you can quickly jump around to lines. There are also plugins to add a little bit more color to your life, like this one, the rainbow brackets, which will brighten up your editor with some colorful brackets that can help you navigate through your code. And yeah, a nyan cat progress bar, because that would be awesome. Now that we've covered all the extras you can add to the IDE, it's about time we looked at all, some of the things that are already built in. Something you'll first notice is this project tool window. So let's customize it a bit. Firstly, it's worth setting up to behave how you want it to. So there are these options here. Enable preview tab, open files with a single click, open directories with a single click, and always select open file. Personally, I like to be able to preview the file before opening it. Otherwise I have a list of open tabs. I leave the other settings as default as I like the buffer of a second click. There are also options to change the appearance, like you can hide the excluded files, for instance, or the scratch files. And you can also sort the files differently. I prefer to do it by type, as I don't usually remember the file's name off the top of my head. And now, it is looking and behaving much more like I want it to. Next, we can configure the rest of the interface. First, right click on the toolbar at the top, which will give us a couple of options. I like to be able to see the different menu options, so I make the menu main menu a separate toolbar. You can add extra widgets to the toolbar. Just right click and select from the options in the add to main toolbar. When starting out, it can be useful to add ones you'll use a lot, at least until you learn shortcuts. If you prefer a clean, minimal space, you can hide the tool window icons you're not using. Just right click them and set them to hide. You can still use these three dots to open them. Another nice option is to make the UI just a little bit smaller to conserve real estate. Go to settings and behavior and appearance and find the compact mode option to make all the borders a bit more, well, compact. WebStorm comes with a lot of its own built-in shortcuts, but it's good to know you can customize them to your own preferences too. If you are coming from another editor, there are options to set the key maps to the ones you are already used to, or if your favorite action doesn't have a shortcut, is worth taking a minute to set one up. Search for the actions here in the key map settings. Search for the action and press the key sequence you like. If it is already taken, it'll give you a warning. It's also useful if you have a non-conventional keyboard like mine. Like for me, anything that uses the insert key is a bit of a nightmare and is worth remapping to a different key map. Okay, so we've covered most of the customizations you'd expect in the IDE, but there are some you might not expect. Once you know about them though, you won't look back. The first is font ligatures. If your font you're using in WebStorm supports ligatures, you can turn them on in settings, editor, font. 
now you have these font ligatures. The next is CSS color preview. Reading hexadecimal code is a cool party trick, but it is much easier to display the color in the background of the editor. To enable this option, go to settings, editor, general, appearance, and select show CSS color preview as background. Now, it's like a party in your IDE. The final setting I like to use is method separators. To add separators between function and class methods, just select the show method separators box in the settings, editor, general appearance, and you'll get these cool separators. You should now have a pretty good idea of the options available for customizing your IDE. If you found this helpful, hit the subscribe for more videos and tips like this, and feel free to let others know how you have customized your WebStorm setup in the comments below. Thanks very much and happy developing.